Hello everyone, uh, so this is a quick review of numerical methods, uh, the topics that we have covered just uh, in my last class. So in, in this video actually I'm going to explain you uh, that what are the numerical methods and why we have to use them uh, for to solve the numerical problems or the mathematical problems. Actually, these techniques have been uh, used uh, not in the recent times, but also in the in the past. For example, in the past, the people used to solve complicated problems using uh, some graphical solutions. Sometimes they use abacus. Sometimes they use like writing on some big boards and papers. So uh, these techniques have been used in in the past before computers. So after computers, the solutions have become much more uh, powerful and fast and uh, optimum. Optimum means it gives you the exact and the required answer on, uh, I mean, with minimum uh, resources and with minimum time and uh, efficiency and, and the maximum efficiency. So I quickly go through all these things because uh, all of these things I have already explained to you in the class. <sighs> Sometimes we are not in a state to find out the exact solutions. So we go for the approximate solutions and those approximate solutions are actually uh, derived from the main or the original concepts. For example, in the upcoming slides, I'm going to discuss you uh, discuss with you the example of a parachuter who actually jumped from a balloon, and then uh, we study his example to compare the exact solution and the analytical solution. So, what is mathematical modeling? Mathematical modeling any physical problem which you have in your daily life if you convert that physical problem into in, in, in by applying the basic principles of science or the laws of conservation of energies into a mathematical model so that is basically known as the mathematical modeling and when we write any equation when we convert the physical models into a mathematical equation or the physical phenomenon into a mathematical equation so we have some dependent variables and some dependent independent variables and some forcing functions in the upcoming slides i will give you the explanation that what are these functions and what are the dependent and independent variables uh, in order to solve any problem, any engineering problem, we have these uh, steps and it is a flowchart which actually uh, gives you a little bit idea that how we can convert a physical problem into a mathematical problem. For example, what is the problem itself? What could be the possible mathematical model and then how we can use it? And then uh, whether we need graphics or numeric numbers or what sort of interface we have to use and then how we will implement the results of this model in, in our daily life. For example, Newton's second law of motion. Every one of you is familiar with this law. So this is the equation F is equal to MA and this law is applicable for any body that is moving uh, uh, without any, I mean, uh, without any continuous force for example sometime the external forces are there and sometime there are no external forces so sometimes the body is in the form of steady state and for example if there is no force acting on the body then it is in the form of a steady state uh, either it could be at rest or it could be moving with a uniform velocity so let's discuss about the, this problem for example how we can model one uh, one one guy that or one object which we can uh, which we can correlate with uh, with the physical laws. For example, if there's a parachuter, it ch jumps, and then there are two forces acting on this parachuter. The one is the drag force, which is acting upward in the upward direction, and the other one is the gravity, which is acting downward. So the net force by which this force will be moving or the resultant force will be the sum of these two forces so the one force the drag force is acting in the upward direction and the 
gravitational force is acting in the downward direction so if we simplify we can get this equation the resultant force is equal to the sum of these two forces the drag force is uh, the coefficient of drag into velocity and uh, the, sorry the uplift force is the uplift force is the uh, coefficient of velocity into uplift force or the drag force is actually the drag coefficient into velocity and the downward force is the mass into uh, gravitational force so we have this equation and we we can equate this equation these equations uh, for example if you know that a is equal to f over m so or from the newton second law of motion f is equal to m a so just put m a m a is equal to uh, just put here m a m g and here uh, uh, c v with with this sign and then if you simplify you will get a is equal to mg minus cv or m and you know a is actually the rate of change of velocity with respect to time so you can convert that a in uh, equal to dv over dt and then uh, if you simplify this equation you will get this equation now this problem is a mathematical problem it is a first order differential equation and this velocity is a function of time v if, if i just put it sub uh, subscript t here so that would be uh, you can say a function of the, the velocity is a function of time and then this equation will be a first uh, order derivative equation with respect to time and we can integrate and we can solve it so and if we solve this equation so that this is the uh, solution equation 1.110 so in this equation we have some dependent variables and some independent variables and some forcing functions for example and there are also some parameters which are constant like drag coefficient like mass so if you see this equation you can see there are some dependent variables for example the velocity is dependent on time time is independent variable and then uh, this by, by this equation we can uh, we can see that we can cal calculate the velocity at any interval of time provided that we have the drag coefficient and the mass of the object the gravitational force itself is known to us that is 9.81 okay so this equation is actually the exact solution of the problem what is the problem a parachuter that has jumped from uh, from the uh, balloon or from the plane or from from the building and we want to calculate the velocity of that parachute at various intervals of time so this equation will give us uh, the velocity at various time intervals provided that we have the drag coefficient c mass of the object and g okay so the other solution the next solution which we can have is actually the uh, using the uh, relations of uh, like velocity and time uh, or that is uh, the same the definition of derivative itself for example the other solution uh, if we if we see which I can drive you know this is actually uh, this is actually a so a is equal to G minus C over M it is the same equation which you have uh, you have seen here this one so here what i can do i can say that dv over dt is actually it is the change in velocity or change in time with respect to time so i can substitute this equation and i can write one more equation uh, for example if i say that what is delta v it is the change in time with respect to this is the change in time for example i can say v at time interval uh, it will take some time because I have to write this equation so for example I just put V here and delete this one T plus 1 T plus or I plus 1 if I say I plus 1 over so minus minus the same same thing but without plus one okay and the same thing is for the time so I can just put this time here instead of V now it is T okay so this is T 
So I have converted this equation into uh, the delta V over delta T and here for this equation we have one condition that limit T approaches to zero. For example here I can say limit delta T Uh, limit delta t approaches to zero as this one okay and we can use this equation in order to find out the velocity at any particular time interval for example like t1 second t2 second so in that way if we want to calculate the velocity and if we simplify this equation so this equation will become I just remove a from here and I put one bracket here big bracket and I put all this stuff inside the bracket Okay, G, and here it will be V I. Uh, sorry, multiplied by this factor. I take from here to here, and I put a bracket, smaller one. And here there is a V which I, I forgot to put here. A V that is also a V here. There is a V. In this equation so there should be a V so I can say this is VI the initial velocity VI and So here uh, it is actually plus, not minus, and the VI should be multiplied here. Okay, so, and from here I can remove these values. In fact, I just can okay so I simplified this equation this equation into this equation to find out the velocity at any time interval and uh, this is I plus 1 is any, any particular time interval if you get confused that what is this I plus 1 you can just put it here T to make sure that it is actually the, the time so uh, yeah it is the velocity at any particular time T So, yes, here. Okay, so th now this, is, this equation will also give us the velocity at any particular interval of time, but we have one condition. We just simplify this derivative that limit delta t approaches to zero. So for a very small interval of time, we can use this equation delta v over delta t. I just put uh, delta v is a change of velocity divided by the change in time for example it is the change in velocity the velocity at time 1 and velocity at time 2 if we subtract these two we will get the change in velocity and if we subtract the time for for the corresponding velocities we will get change in time and we can use this equation in order to get the solution so in the next part I'm going I'll teach you how you can find out the solution uh, using Microsoft Excel thank you